There are thousands of refugees entering Bangladesh every day. They cross the border of Myanmar, where the state military has launched a violent offensive against an ethnic minority group, the Rohingya. The UN reported that since August 2017, about 400,000 Rohingya men, women, and children have fled their homes in Myanmar's Rakhine state. Reports claim that the military has been killing and raping the Rohingya and has set their villages on fire. Satellite imagery showing burned villages confirms those reports. Because Myanmar has refused access to human rights investigators, the current situation cannot yet be fully uh, assessed, but the situation remains or seems a textbook, uh, textbook example of ethnic cleansing. The term ethnic cleansing has been reserved for some of the worst atrocities in history. The UN defines it as a purposeful policy designed by one ethnic or religious group to remove by violent and terror-inspiring means the civilian population of another ethnic or religious group from certain geographic areas. What makes Myanmar a textbook example is that the military has been launching attacks on the Rohingya, a Muslim minority in a majority Buddhist country. Violent tactics have forced tens of thousands of Rohingya to flee their homes. While many fled to Malaysia and Thailand, most ended up in Bangladesh. The recent wave of violence is the latest in a pattern of discrimination that started over 50 years ago. In 1962, Myanmar, then called Burma, was taken over by the military in a coup. They got rid of the country's constitution and created a military junta. Like many dictatorships, they promoted fierce nationalism based on the country's Buddhist identity. And when they needed a common enemy to help unite the population, the Rohingya were singled out as a threat. Tensions between the Burmese Buddhist population and the Rohingya go back to the Second World War, when each group supported opposing sides. The Rohingya sided with the British colonialists, who ruled the country. And the Buddhists mostly sided with the Japanese invaders, hoping they'd help end the British rule after the war. But even in modern Myanmar, the Rohingya minority continue to be an easy target. Although their lineage can be traced back to 15th century Burma, the government has been forcing them out, claiming they're illegal immigrants from Bangladesh. It started in 1978 after a massive crackdown called Operation Dragon King forced about 200,000 Rohingya to flee to Bangladesh. The military reportedly used violence and rape to drive them out. About 170,000 Rohingya reportedly returned to Burma. Then in 1982, the government passed the Citizenship Act, recognizing 135 ethnic groups. The Rohingya, with a population of about 1 million, were not on the list and became a stateless people. In 1991, Myanmar's military launched another campaign, literally called Operation Clean and Beautiful Nation. This time, about 250,000 Rohingya fled to Bangladesh. Tensions continued to build against the Rohingya in the 2000s. Violence broke out in 2012, when four Muslim men were accused of raping and killing a Buddhist woman in Rakhine. Buddhist nationalists backed by security forces attacked Muslim neighborhoods, burned homes, displacing tens of thousands of Rohingya again. Human Rights Watch deemed it an ethnic cleansing campaign. By this point, the Rohingya were persecuted, disenfranchised, and stateless. In 2016, a Rohingya militant group, the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army, emerged and coordinated small-scale attacks on border police stations. An attack on August 25, 2017, left 12 police officers dead and sparked the current crisis against Rohingya civilians. A brutal retaliation by the state security forces has led to about 400 deaths and the mass exodus of about 400,000 Rohingya to Bangladesh. Since the August attack, 210 villages have been burned to the ground. The violent campaign has triggered the fastest growing humanitarian crisis in recent years. But Myanmar's de facto leader and Nobel Peace Prize winner, Aung San Suu Kyi, has barely acknowledged the attacks. More than 50% of the villages of Muslims are intact. They are as they were before the attacks took place. When she says that, you know, 50% of the uh, Muslim villages are still present in Rakhine State, well, I mean, what are we talking about? 50% are gone, 50% are burnt out. You know, in any school I went to, 50% is a failing grade. Recent reports claim that the military has planted landmines along the Bangladesh border to prevent the Rohingya from returning. Myanmar's government has systematically driven the Rohingya out of the country. Over the last five decades, it has stripped their citizenship, terrorized them, and destroyed their homes. And now, it wants to keep them from ever coming back.